Warriors, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat, who reads. And speaking of hats, you know what this means. It's book call time! Book calls, as always, they are my favorite videos to watch because I love seeing what everybody has recently added to their collections and are excited about. And they're my favorite videos to make because I love showing off what I have recently acquired. And this is the book call for January, February 2024, the first book call of the year. And it's a sizable one. Uh, a lot of booktube that I follow is doing the read what you own challenge and I say, okay, that's great, but I'm not going to stop buying books and I clearly haven't stopped. And that's okay. I've been kind of sort of doing a challenge of it myself. I'm kind of prioritizing some of the books that I've been sitting in my stack the longest, so I've been working a lot on that right now. There we go. <laughs> um, so let's start with a non-book, bookish item. Um, Valentine's Day was, of course, in February, so I had gifts from my girlfriend who always spoils me, and we'll have more from her later on when we get into the books themselves, but she also gave me another pair of beautiful Harry Potter socks to add to the other two pair that I almost don't want to wear because they're so nice, but <laughs> I see what she's doing. I'm on to her whole trick now of, like, getting them by the book as how I ranked them. So I can see what she's doing. I appreciate it. She always gives me these great socks. And those are great. I don't know, like I said, I almost don't want to wear some of the, these socks because they're almost too nice to wear. But whatever. So anyway, on to the stuff you're actually here for, the books. Let's start with something I never talk about because I don't buy a lot of them, but I have bought a couple eBooks this last two months. Um, these popped up on sale, I think between them, the two of them cost me a grand total of 99 cents or something like that. So we'll just talk about them briefly. One was Death of a Christmas Tree Salesman by Patricia Meredith. Um, I'd seen a, I'd seen a, I thought there's an in booktube, I'd seen it mentioned somewhere on a video I just happened to watch. And I thought, well, it's a snowman detective at the North Pole. That sounds fun. And then I saw it all of a sudden was 99 cents. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up for that. So I picked that up. I probably won't read that till around Christmas time. And the other one was Lonnie Bush's All Hope of Becoming Human. Um, this one sounded interesting and I found it when it popped up for free. So I obviously grabbed it because free is free. Essentially, it's an earthquake, alien monsters, end of the world, sci-fi horror type stuff. So it sounds like a fun one. I'm thinking I'm going to probably tackle that maybe this summer. Otherwise, I'll wait till like sci-fi September, October horror, somewhere in there. But I'm going to start trying to read some more ebooks because I actually have a ton of them I picked up for free. And I never read them, so I'm going to try to start mixing them in throughout the year, along with all the other stuff I have. Which, like I said, that pile never gets any smaller. So, <clears throat> just in the first part of the new year, I did an annual bookstore run. My girlfriend and I took off. We went down to, to two bookstores plus a thrift store type deal. And I got books at all of them. So we got... Six of them here first from Half Price Books. This first one is Bruce Sterling's Heavy Weather. Um, Storm Chasers. Da -da -da -da. With F6 Tornadoes. Oh, okay. I always thought F5s were the worst. So, somebody on BookTube talked about this book. I can't remember who it was. I was watching it, and they talked about it, and I thought, well, that sounded interesting, so I thought I'll keep an eye out for it, and I found it was, like, three bucks, I think. But I haven't read much. It looks like... It sounds like one of those, you know, 90s weather-related disaster movies they used to make a lot of that they don't make anymore. Only in book form. So that'll be a fun one. <clears throat> I'm thinking this summer. I mean... It's the time of the year for something like this, right? Nice time of the year thing. 
Um, this is Jason F. Wright's The Wednesday Letters. Um, I found this in the clearance corner. It was like two bucks. And it sounds like this couple um, were writing letters to each other every week or something. And mystery about who they really were or something their kids are found out because the parents have died now it sounded it sounded very mitch alwam-esque and i'm oh now that's cool i was like there's something in the back here there is an envelope in the back of the book with the epilogue essentially wrote on a note card of sorts so that's kind of fun. I'm not going to read it because I don't want to spoil anything. But that's already fun. That makes this book already that much more fun. So I don't know much about it. I don't know when I will read this. But sometime, hopefully this year. It doesn't. It's not very long, so it'll probably be a good thick read. It'll probably be one of those that's going to be semi-sad, you know, but... I found myself a copy, finally, for myself of Edgar Cantero's Meddling Kids... I've read this one before. It's often compared to Scooby-Doo meets H.P. Lovecraft. So if that sounds great to you, I mean, it just sounds hilarious, right? I loved this when I read it a few years ago, and I've been looking for a copy ever since for a decent price. Found this one. I think it was eight. And I mean, look at it. It looks brand new. There's not a crease on this book. So that's cool. I finally have my own copy, and I can stick it up here on the shelf next to... Cantero's other novel I have this body's not big enough for both of us which I've talked about on the channel before as well um Victor Lavelle Lavelle's The Ballad of Black Tom I've heard a lot of different people talk about this book um Sin being one of them I know Sin talked about it I know somebody else talked about it. maybe it was MJ talked about it somebody else talked about it I know that I've never read this author before, but I have really good things about this book. It's not very long. This will be a real quick read. Maybe read this around October, this fall, maybe. Maybe earlier, who knows. It's only 149 pages, so it won't take me long to read this. I'm really excited for this one. This will be a great one. And that's one of my other goals this year is actually to keep track of who I get these book recommendations for. So when I actually get around to picking them up, I can actually give credit to the right people. This, um, I've heard this book compared with the whole music angle to like Daisy Jones a little bit. And this, so this is Jessica Anya Blau's Mary Jane. I've heard it's, um, music themed. She's a nanny for the daughter of a local doctor, but then the doctor is like got these the rock star and his movie star wife to get them clean off of their drugs. So I was like, okay, that sounds interesting. It's probably not something I'll read more than once, but it was a decent price, so I picked it up. But the last one from Half Price, um, I've never read this author before. This is the first in a series. I know um, Patrick Ryan has raved about this series, I believe, in the past, or he's talked about this series, and there's other ones have too. But this is Michael J. Sullivan's Theft of Swords. This is a chunky, chunky boy, but I guess it is, like, technically two short novels in one. Um, I've been wanting to try it because I kept hearing good things. It was, like, eight bucks. And, again, it looks brand new. There's not a crease on this thing. So that's a great find. I don't know when I'll get to this. I would say this year, but I'm not going to hold myself to that because I just, I don't know. I have so many other fantasy series started. I really should wrap some up before I start anymore. But we'll see. Maybe I'll get to it earlier rather than later. I don't know. So then after all that, we went to this thrift store called Stuff Etc., um, these books, I think, were like all three bucks a piece. Um, we have Kevin Wilson's The Family Fang. I've read a couple Kevin Wilson before and have enjoyed them. Never read this. I think it was a movie, too, wasn't it? Somebody know? 
Let me know in the comments below. Was the Family Fang a movie? I think it really, I really think it was, but I don't know much about it. But like I said, I've enjoyed Kevin Wilson in the past, so I'm willing to give him another shot. A, a wonder of a first novel. Oh, it's his first novel. Well, that's great. So yeah, I'll be reading that one at some point. Again, not very long. I'll probably stick it in somewhere this summer, maybe. I don't know. Maybe that'll be one that sits here for a while. This one I also know was made into a movie. And I've looked at it different places, and I've thought about it different times. But it was in really good condition, and I think this one was actually on clearance. I think it was only like a dollar. But this is um, Jonas Jonasson, Jonasson's The Hundred-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared. Um, it's a mouthful of a title. It's a big selling book. It's a well-known book. I've never read it. But like I said, here again, look at it. It's like brand new. There's nothing, there's not a scratch or a crease or nothing. And I love that. If I can find a used book for that price, that's awesome. Like for like a cheap price and it's in that good a condition. I mean, it's awesome. As to what it's about, I'm assuming it's about a 100 year old man who climbs out the window and disappears and goes on a great adventure. How about that? I got it right. <laughs> and then this one was an I a, a cover by. I know they always say you shouldn't judge a book by the cover. But the cover caught my eye. And it sounded like um, he claims he's a thousand year old man who continues to search for the love he lost so long ago. It was giving me some um, Addie LaRue vibes just from reading the synopsis this is Jonathan Evison's again and again and look at that cover that cover is awesome so the cover really caught my eye the synopsis kind of sold it in for me I thought you know what I'm gonna give it a shot I don't know when I'll get to this one either this is one of those that'll probably end up sitting in my stacks for like a year or two and I'll forget about it for a while but who knows I'll get to it eventually so after that, we went back to Barnes & Noble because, you know, we didn't buy enough books and stuff yet. So there was some on a table there. It was buy one, get one 50% off. I've already talked about this book in my TBR for March, but this is Juno Black's Shady Hollow. It's an animal murder mystery. It sounds fun. It sounds cute. I love the cover. The cover is just very fairy tale esque type deal. Um, this one I heard about from, um, Kristen Craves Books. I will also be tagging all these channels, so you're going to have a bunch of TV channels tagged down below that I mentioned, but. And then I picked up John Connolly's The Book of Lost Things, namely because I've read John Connolly once before. I know he has a huge, um, bibliography, just tons of stuff he's written. And they don't even list the one I've read in this one but i have liked his stuff in the past i'm willing to give him a chance on something else and like i said this one rang up for 50 percent off so you know it's it's a win at that point and the books are already tipping over oh boy all right so then i was down to another place and saw a movie it was in another city and they had a BAM there, so of course I had to stop and check out the bargain corner at BAM because, you know, the bargain corner at BAM is the best thing in the world. But um, we have a thriller here from Kate Kessler. This is Seven Crows. Um, kidnapping. I don't know. It sounded interesting. Got a nice cover. I love the covers. I had, like, a lot of really nice cover buys here. A lot of these, the covers are just beautifully eye-catching covers and then i found a horror book i never read even though it says it's a thriller it sounds like a horror this is scott carson's the chill um drowned village in the dark waters of the chilliwaukee reservoir dark prophecy looms and the time has come for it to be fulfilled so you know that sounds kind of creepy and dark it's Actually, it's pretty thick, really. So this will probably be a good October of horror read. Seven Crows. I don't know when I'll get to that. I'm. It's again. It's probably one that'll sit here for a while. Because, like I said, I'm trying to prioritize some of the books that have been here a long time. 
I'm working on my April TBR already a little bit now, getting it picked out. And I'm like, okay, that book's been here a long time. Let's read it. So, so now, okay, they're moving again. So then for Valentine's Day, like I said, my girlfriend spoils me as she always does. She got me five more books. First, we have a trilogy. This is, I believe it's called the Inheritance Games Trilogy, or is it the Hawthorne Brothers Trilogy? I don't remember. But we have the Inheritance Games, the Hawthorne Legacy, and the Final Gambit. And I know it started as a trilogy, but it looks like there's like two or three more already after these three. But she knew I wanted to try this series out, so she got me the whole series. Ain't that nice? That's great. I don't know when I will read these either. Maybe July. I think I'll pick these up in July and just do the whole trilogy. Just go boom, boom, boom and get them read. I don't have anything picked out for July yet. So that'll be fun. Then we have Lisa Springer's There's No Way I Die First. This sounds like a teen slasher book. I mean, it says, Mac, the key to surviving a scary movie is to recognize that you're living in one. I mean, we also get some, like kind of creepy almost pennywise the clown from it on the cover there a little bit don't we it sounded fun it sounds like a good spooky season read probably a good one for october of horror it's not very long did it well, is fun jump scare starter pack top 10 essential black horror movies watch at your own risk how many have i seen here I've seen two. Yeah, I'm a little behind on horror movies. I'm not a big horror movie person, but I don't mind reading them. Is that weird? And then we have the last one, another horror novel. This is Jimmy Giuliano's Dead Eleven. Um, first of all, again, I love the cover. The creepy VHS tape. Um, the spooky island-looking scene. The little skull right down in there i don't know if you can see it or not but um it just i remember reading about it it sounded really really good so i am excited to tackle this one again probably not till october of horror because i can always use some more there and that is the book haul 20 books total counting the two ebooks at least I think that if I counted right, it's counts two ebooks. I don't even know for sure. Maybe it was more than that. But I would normally hold them all up here, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to die on screen. So um, that's my book call for January, February 2024. Have you read any of these? Do any of these sound exciting to you? Um, are there any I should be prioritizing? I mean, like I need help prioritizing, but. I'd love to get a discussion going with you in the comments down below about any of these. Plus, what was in your most recent book hauls or what books have you recently gotten a hold of that you're excited to tackle? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep turning pages.